the Rogue River was one of the first of the eight rivers in the National Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. And it was basically designated because of its uh, unique whitewater experience, uh, the boating experience it provides, the fishing opportunity that it has, uh, salmon and steelhead are internationally known, and then the scenery value of that river corridor. Um, it's in a pretty uh, defined canyon, um, and you actually go through uh, a couple areas that are less than 16 feet wide with uh, canyon walls 40 feet over your head. And, and uh, so those things are what bring people to the Rogue River. The recreation section of the Rogue, which is 27 miles in length, is uh, it is not regulated for private boaters. So anybody, any day of the week, any time of the year can actually uh, float that stretch. Um, they could actually jet boat that stretch as well. Um, for commercial uses, it is under permit for BOM, and we require all the outfitters and guys to have a, a permit. And same thing, their clients can uh, um, uh, yeah, get an outfitter and, and go down on the river. So if you're unable to get or don't want to get in a raft or some other floating craft, you can actually take a jet boat and experience that section of the river as well. If you're a private boater and you're non-lodge trip, we have, there's several natural campsites along the river, primarily either gravel bars or sandbars that the people historically have camped at. A lot of these are at the mouths of, of streams and those are the prime locations that people go for. Um, so you not only have the river there, you actually have an incoming stream with cold, clear water. Um, some camps have vast views of the sky from the canyon, so those are highly sought after as well. We actually try to encourage our boaters to uh, take a campsite that fits their, their group size. If you're a large group, um, there are some spots that will hold 20 to 30 people, and there's 120 people that start each day. There's what's called campsite competition. So we ask people to be mindful of that, and if they are going to lay over a day, a second day, um, that they might take a less desirable spot, maybe not at the mouth of a creek so that other folks that are just going to be in that area one night have places to stay. There's five lodges along the wild section of the Rogue, and uh, those, those lodges, of course, are commercial, and, and they'll cost you, but uh, they'll put you up three-course meals, even make your lunch for the next day. One of the things is the Rogue River is a pack-in, pack-it-out river um, that includes human waste. So there are a few toilets along the river, but uh, besides that, every rafter has to have a portable toilet system and uh, not only their garbage, but everything else we ask them to pack out. The wildlife on the Rogue is, is pretty unique. You get to see lots of black bears um, and all through the whole river section. Uh, we have bears. We have uh, bears that uh, uh, unfortunately have become habitual bears and so we have problem areas. We actually have uh, uh, to negate that, we have electric fence areas that uh, we encourage rafters to put their coolers, their food, their garbage in. Um, a lot of deer, um, a lot of uh, osprey, bald eagles, uh, river otters. Um, so it's a great experience rafting the rogue to see all the wildlife that's there. Um, we also encourage folks not to harass the wildlife. Um, so, you know, give them their space. Um, most of the bears do really well. Um, but we ask folks not to interact with them per se, feed or anything like that. The wild section of the Rogue River requires a non-commercial permit between May 15th and October 15th each year. So one of the ways to get that is we have a lottery every uh, year starting December 1st and it runs through January 31st and a potential applicant can put a lottery application in um, and then at the end of January we do a random draw and uh, you can actually get permitted to float the Rogue. We allow 60 people to go down a day. Average party size that time of year is about six folks. Basically about 10 groups a day on average are permitted to go down uh, the wild section. The same stretch of river also uh, is open to commercial uses and all commercial operators require a permit as well. And if you're an individual that wants to take a uh, uh, a guided trip, then uh, there are approximately 35 outfitters on the Rogue River and uh, you can actually check with them. They have certain dates they go. Um, some trips are three days, some trips go up to five days, lodges and camping. So for someone that wants to be outfitted, the Rogue is a great uh, river to experience. If you're 
uh, ever thinking about coming out to the Rogue River and doing even the wild section of the Rogue. Um, we do have a BLM website on the Rogue River out of the Medford District. Um, it has lots of information, including how to apply for a permit, starting with the lottery, um, even after the lottery, if it's during the middle of the summer and uh, you want to try to get on the Rogue River, there's, uh, uh, there's the processes that are associated with that. There's information on the wildlife, there's information on what to take, what to bring, um, proper river etiquette, um, some of the things that, uh, that might challenge you, uh, the, the rapids on the river. Um, but uh, that website uh, holds a lot of information that if you're thinking about coming out, I would, I would look at.